Looking at these various inflorescences, can you tell what they have in common? What is the character that unites them? While in the majority of flowering plants, petals are the most conspicuous parts of the flower, in the case of plants from the family Myrtaceae, it's the numerous colorful stamens that draw attention to their flowers. Just look at these Melaleuca inflorescences, whose pink and purple stamens create these pom-pom-like balls. Not all flowers of the family Myrtaceae look like furry balls or bottle brushes. Yes, plants of the genus Calistamen are called bottle brushes because of their resemblance to this cleaning tool. But having flowers with many conspicuous stamens is in fact an important distinguishing character for Myrtaceae, or the myrtle family. Moreover, sepals and or petals might fuse into a cap that covers the flower bud and lifts up like a lid once the flower is ready to open. This structure is called a calyptra, and it's nicely visible in eucalyptus flower buds. You might remember the term calyptra from our bryophyte video, where we talked about a calyptra covering the spore capsule and mosses. But back to our Myrtaceae flowers. Look at this melaleuca. This flowering cluster is a spike, an inflorescence composed of many individual flowers. When we look at the individual flower, we can see the green part, that's the calyx, and then a couple of petals here, the rest of them have already fallen off. The stamens are united and arranged into staminal bundles. Similarly, this bottle brush has flowers arranged in spikes and when we pull out an individual flower, we can distinguish a calyx and petals, which are both quite hairy in this particular species, and then we have numerous stamens. But I told you that not all Myrtaceae have reduced flowers, so let's look at flowers of those species whose petals are much more showy. And let's start with the showiest one I know, Fijoa. You might know Fijoa for its fruit, known also as pineapple guava. Fijoa flowers have four obvious sepals and four petals, which are thick and juicy and apparently very tasty. I've never tried them, but let me know if you have. Other examples of species with showy petals are Eugenia, Syzygium and Lophostemon. But when you look at all these flowers, Notice how stamens stand out. Can you see the pattern now? But flowers are not the only plant parts that might help you recognize a member of the family Myrtaceae. Another character is their fruits. They are either dry or fleshy. In fact, Myrtaceae used to be divided into two subfamilies based on their fruit type, but this division has been disputed and is not supported by recent genetic findings. The dry fruits are woody capsules, and many of them have this characteristic button-like look. When you observe the capsules of a few species, you start getting the feel for that look. And again, not all Myrtaceae seed capsules look alike, but they have similar features. You can see in this eucalyptus fruit that it has four slits. Those are valves that eventually open, releasing many, many tiny seeds from inside. I once harvested seed capsules of a Brisbane box tree and left them on my desk. One morning, the seeds were just everywhere, so the release can happen quickly after the seeds inside mature. On many plants, you'll find that the capsules appear in clusters, of course, because the flowers were in clusters, and they can stay on a plant for years. The growth of the plant on the same shoot continues so you get these weird woody looking sections, often followed by an inflorescence the next year. But fruits can be also fleshy, like in this Eugenia, whose fruits look like apricots. I read that they taste like apricots, but I wouldn't dare to try, because the smell is absolutely awful. Let me know if any of you ever tried this fruit. I already mentioned Fijoa, which has delicious, fleshy, flowery-tasting fruit, but another common species might be Syzygium, which is a popular hedge plant here in Southern California, and it has these purple, plum-like fruits. Plants of the family Myrtaceae are woody, so they're either shrubs or trees. 
Many of them have peeling or papery bark. Some eucalyptus species shed their bark in large sheets, while the bark of others, like this Melaleuca, comes off in thin layers, giving it its common name of paper bark tree. Not every member of the family Myrtaceae has a peeling bark, but it's a pretty good character share amongst many members of the family. Myrtaceae are distributed predominantly in the southern hemisphere, with the biggest representation in Australia. Just think of eucalyptus, which is an iconic Australian tree, and the main diet of koalas, another symbol of Australia. But you don't have to be in the southern hemisphere or warm to tropical regions to get to see Myrtaceae. Many plants of the myrtle family can tolerate milder climates and are widely cultivated in many places around the world. And if you've never seen Myrtaceae growing outdoors, I bet you've used products made from these plants. Myrtaceae are well known and praised for their essential oils. That's why I think they are the best smelling plant family. They have oil glands, mainly in their leaves, that are strongly fragrant and you can easily smell the oil when you crush the leaves. The smell is very specific, strong and almost medicinal. You might be familiar with the eucalyptus smell, but the most famous is probably tea tree oil, which is an essential oil produced by distillation of the leaves of Melaleuca alternifolia. The oils are not only good smelling, but they also have antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties, making them a popular ingredient for medicinal and cosmetic purposes. The same benefits are assigned to manuka honey, which is produced by bees pollinating manuka plants, Leptospermum scoparium. Some varieties of Leptospermum are grown as decorative hedges, such as this one in Southern California. Cloves, a popular spice, are in fact dried up flower buds of Syzygium aromaticum. I took a picture of flower buds of another Syzygium species and you can definitely see the resemblance between the spice and the flower buds. Clove oil has been used in dentistry for a very long time, as its oil has natural pain relieving properties. Although the essential oils of Myrtaceae have all these wonderful benefits, be careful using them as they can be quite irritating and even toxic if used improperly. What is your experience with Myrtaceae? Do you have any growing where you live? Do you like the eucalyptus or tea tree smell? Or is it off-putting for you? I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. And if you would like to support my work so I can create more content, and also, if you would like to become a part of our Nature Clearly community, please consider joining Patreon as well. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.